Hello everybody, Spider here, coming soon podcast, of course, being joined by Paul Taylor, my man, how are you brother? I'm great, how are you? Man, I'm doing great bro, I mean of course we are here in San Antonio, Texas, and uh, right off the bat man, this is the first time coming to San Antonio. No it's not, I've been to San Antonio, I don't know, a handful of times, and it seems like, I think I've been, for events of this sort, I've been uh, in San Antonio more times than any place else in the world. Like, oh nice! Think, yeah. San Antonio loves the horror, um, loves toys, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, like puzzle boxes and whatever. And Funko Pops. And, uh, <laughs> this is the third event I've done with um, with Monster. Wait, yeah, Monster Con. Uh, Monster Con related events. Right. That's cool too. So, yeah, I love San Antonio. Tomorrow I'm going to do the river tour. Or a boat tour. Oh, nice. I was going to ask you, are you going to stick around and go out there and be a tourist, man? Yeah. Please, yeah. bro. And I always ask because a lot of times we got, I've covered quite a few conventions and I always ask, like, are they going to you know, stay in there? Like, man, we got to fly it back out. So a lot of people don't even go to, they're not able to go downtown and see the river walk and just the stuff that makes San Antonio what it is, you know? Yeah. It's a, well, I live in Texas, so yeah. I'm just going to drive home tomorrow night. No, you see, and I was going to ask you about that. You're talking about yeah. living up in Dallas. I mean, of course, uh, what, what state? As far as Texas, what city do you reside in? I live in Fort Worth. Okay. I used to live in Dallas for many years, but I, a couple of years ago I moved to Fort Worth and I kind of prefer it. To Dallas because it's easier. It's just right. like not as angry. It's not oh, yeah. as, <laughs> as stressful. Um, and the arts are very supported there. There's yeah. museums and everything. And uh, I, I lived in New York for a few years. Many years ago, and was there for 9 11, and that really didn't sit oh. right with me. But I always thought I was a big city guy, but right. I realized within the last few years I'm not, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm not a New Yorker, and I thought I was, but. Yeah, nah, it's too much. You see, and that's one of the things living here in San Antonio. Of course, it's still considered military city, USA. I mean, yeah, at one yeah. point we had like seven bases that, that were active. Yeah. Uh, it's gone down quite a bit, but uh, growing up in the '80s and '90s, it was always like, man, if we get hit, like San Antonio was one of the cities we always like, wow, like we're, we're going to be the first one to get hit, you know? Yeah. I mean, military-wise, I mean, we're they're all over the place, but uh, luckily that was never the case, man. Um, but yeah, man. I mean, as far as 9/11, uh, I was a mailman when that happened. Um, I walked up to my customer's door, knocked on the door, and he had this drop. His face was just like he had seen horror man and I'm like hey you know what's going on and he's like man you didn't hear what happened and I'm like nah so he opens the door and I'm looking at the TV as the second building is going down bro it's true. and yeah and I was just like what are you watching and he's like that's happening and I thought it was a movie yeah. but you know the fact that you lived there and you were that close to it yeah, you know PTSD free, man. like so many people uh, did yeah I didn't get to kill like so many people did no yeah so man like, wow. it's, that's big reason why I left as well. I was uh, I was spackling a wall. I was going to take over the lease because my roommate had uh, she found a boyfriend. was going to get married and move out. And I had to put all the bills in my name. I had to get a new roommate. I was spackling the wall, getting ready to paint it. And I just stood back and I said, what the F am I doing? I don't even want to be here. Yeah. And like, snap decision. That was it. Because I knew that I would be a working actor again, yeah. like as much as I had been in Dallas again. And, yeah. and that's really all I've ever wanted. Um, and then it wasn't until I moved back that I got my first movie, which was Sin City in right. 2005. And then I just started getting movies. Snowballing. And I got and <laughs> and so things are good. And I, I, I've been very blessed and lucky with the crazy things that have not happened right now. Right. Versus the crazy things I've done. You know, it's been like, oh, you're lucky. I'm really lucky. No, no, for sure, man. Because one of the things, I mean, when it when it's real, I mean, yeah, it's 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 frightening as hell. I mean, horror movies I like because it's a, it's a, of course it's a rea- it's a, it's not reality, but it kind of takes you into that. Like, okay, you know what? Uh, part of your brain where you're like, you see horror or you see yeah. something, but when it happens for real, you're like, yeah, man, that's a whole different ball game, man. A real life is so much more horrible <laughs> than things things that humans do to humans in real life. Yeah. is so much more horrible than a fantasy horror movie. No, definitely. Pinhead, come on. <laughs> he's, he's a made up. He's a fairy tale. Yes. It could never happen. No, for and sure. So it's like, yeah, it's horrifying to watch it. Yeah. And it's gross, but it's fun because they could never happen. Yeah. It could never happen. No, no. And that's, that's why it's entertainment, even though, you know, some horror movies go way too far with the gore and it's all about cruelty. And right. It's like, eh, not into that. Yeah, you're not seeing that. that that's, gore for gore's sake yeah. is not what I'm into. Yeah, you see, and that's 
I, I, I love the 80s slasher films. I love the 80s style. I love the 80s. And for me, that's where I'm stuck at, and that's what I, I personally you know rather watch. But yeah, I mean, when there's a movie and it's a little too much for me, man, I just pass on it, you know. But I mean, it's, it's somebody else's flavor, then by all means, you know. But <laughs> and and uh, let me ask you one uh, question earlier. You were talking to another guest that was walking by uh, about the part in Pinhead. Uh, you brought out the fact that you didn't even you weren't trying out auditioning for Pinhead itself. Can you tell no, us about I that? For, uh, the of the auditor, yeah, with, um, because uh, they they were still in talks with Doug Bradley to yeah. come back and play Pinhead again. And it wasn't. I put my audition on tape for the auditor, and uh, and then like a week later, I got another email saying. Um, Doug Bradley's not coming back. We'd like for Paul, for you to for Paul to get on tape for Pinhead. And my reaction was, at first, it was like, there's no effing way I'm going to get this part. And that lasted for about five minutes, yeah. maybe less. But I had already been in, you know, I'd already been in a new place where I was trying to manage with the belief that you manifest your life with yeah. your thoughts. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is exactly what I've been asking for an opportunity like this. Pinhead was my favorite 80s horror icon. Nice. Um, I mean, always my favorite. Yeah. I just, I thought it was so cool. <laughs> I'm like, wait, I decided to make it the best audition I'd ever done in my life. I concentrated everything into it. And then I got the car and it was, like, um, it was a dream come true. It was oh, yeah. like, Halloween kid who, who wants to be a movie star and a monster himself. And boom. Gets part, passes Pinhead, his favorite 80s horror icon. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a trip. And then a friend of mine texted me when The Secret was out that I was playing Pinhead with the words, congratulations on your instant cult status. <laughs> it was like, man, oh, yes, definitely. It was crazy. No, for sure, man. And of course, I mean, uh, having been that guy and actually now, has it been, I don't want to say easier, but it has, it opened up more doors for you to actually... Definitely. It's made more people want to work with me because yeah. it's made more people aware of me and they've seen more of my work now. Right. And I have things lined up. Yeah. Like films I'm going to be working on and I have stuff that's in the works that I've already, you know, worked on. Right. It's going to be coming out and stuff, so... Life is sweet. My life is very sweet. I'm very lucky and uh, I'm grateful for it. I get to do conventions, make some cash, and meet some wonderful people in different cities. Right. It's so crazy how I just keep getting these gifts from the universe. I don't know what I did to deserve it, but or deserve is not even the right word. I, no, I, I mean, it's not the right word. You, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just lucky. I'm a yeah. very lucky person. Uh, you gotta be grateful every day. You gotta treat every day as the present moment because there is no past, there is no future. You only have what you have now. So take it and just like do your best yeah. with it and do your best to love yourself. That's the toughest thing. No, no. You believe in yourself and know that you're worth it. That's not easy. That is not easy for any of us, really. No, no. You see, and I, I was going to ask you about that. I mean, growing up, uh, was, were your intentions to get into film? I mean, were you in film, like, uh, theater? I told my dad as a kid that I wanted to be a movie star. And the words out of his mouth were, oh, look at Tom Cruise. Do you think that big screen, do you, do you really think people are going to want to, or whoever it was, it right. Tom Cruise, because we're about the same age. He's like... You really think people are going to want to see your face up on that big screen? Oh, man. Because I was kind of a goofy, goofy kid. Yeah. If I'd been smart and known things and been an adult in a child's body, I would have said, <laughs> Dad, have you ever heard of character actors? I'm going to be yeah. a movie star. Yeah. You know? And then it turns out that I turned out to be kind of more handsome than I think I thought I was going to be. Not to brag, but I <laughs> and And, uh, and look what happened. Yeah. I wish she was still around to see it. Man. Like, yeah, but Dad... I may not be like Meryl Streep or no, yeah, you know something like that. But I'm kind of a movie star, and that's cool. No, yeah. But more than that, I'm just I'm a working actor in right. film, and that's right. I did theater for decades, love it so much. But then I started doing movies, and now I'm kind of like I've been on stage for three three years. Yeah. Oh yeah, three years. Like 2020 just kind yeah. of demolished that. Oh yeah, and uh, and then coming back, it sort of I I changed. I got older. I'm like, ah, eh, I don't know, life's different. But uh, getting to be a film actor, I yeah. love the, the there's a record of your work. Yeah. With film, and it's a different, it's 
height. It's all acting, but it's still different. Feature right. and film are so different in what the actor actually has to do for it to be good film acting or good right. film acting. They're, they're married, but they're not the same thing. And it's only been within the last couple of years that I've been able to do some do some work and go and look at the look at the film or look at the, the, the take and go, I'm actually doing this. I'm actually now a good film actor. I'm not <laughs> bragging. I'm just like that's how I feel about yeah. my performances now. And it used to be that I would hate. I would just hate watching myself because everything was too big, you know. Yeah. And when I was playing Pinhead, um, we. The director, Gary Tunnicliffe, who actually ended up playing the honor, it's funny. Um, when I was in town, I, when I was in town in, in LA getting my head cast on so they could do the makeup, he showed me this one scene from Star Wars. It was Peter Cushing and Princess Leia, the original Star Wars. Yeah. And um, Mark Moff Tarkin and Princess Leia, and they were on the the Death Star. And uh, he's saying, okay, I'm going to destroy one of these planets. I'm maybe getting this wildly wrong. I don't know. Star Wars. <laughs> oh yeah, they're gonna swamp you later, bro. <laughs> but it's like, do you want? I'm going to destroy one of these planets. I think this is right. Which one do you want me to? So he goes and he blows something up, destroys something, <laughs> and she steps forward. And she goes no, and he just very suddenly says, "You're far too trusting." And he says, "You're far too trusting." That's when Gary stopped the the DVD and said, "There you are. There's your pinhead." I'm like. Oh, okay, it's Peter yeah. Cushing saying, you're far too trusting. Yeah. And so, like our shorthand during the filming of Hellraiser Judgment, he'd say, just throw it away. Just do another take and just throw it away, throw it away. And right before he'd say action, I'd say, you're far too trusting. <laughs> and then I'd just speak as Pinhead. And that's that's what yeah. my performance is. Nice. Peter Cushing as Pinhead. Yeah, <laughs> man. So. You see, and of course, you give it your own twist. I mean, of course, it was you uh, portraying Pinhead and... And the fact that uh, you were able to jump into that iconic role. I mean, was there a part in the movie that you actually uh, just threw out yourself and kind of did like an improv and just kind of did, did anything stick with the film? I, mean, I don't think so. I mean, what came to mind when you were asking that, though, was the very, my very first uh, scene at the very beginning of the right. movie. When, we're, when, we, when I'm talking, we're, we're profiled, talking to the auditor about the problem with technology and the fact that the puzzle right. box doesn't work anymore. Um, and then I have, so, and then I turn, and there's just this, this bar of light yeah. that when I turn is just on my eyes. Yeah. And you've seen me in profile, you've seen the pins, you've seen him talking. So then those are the souls we shall seek out first. I don't know, that didn't feel like anybody but me just being a movie star. It was <laughs> just, to me it was so cool that it was like very old Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. And I loved that. It was like a black and white. Oh, yeah. Um, you see? Gloria Swanson or somebody. Yeah. I'm ready for my close up or whatever it would be. <laughs> it was like just the eye. I just thought that was super cool. No, yeah. You see, because there, there's parts in the movie that, that I'm like, man, I wonder if you felt comfortable doing that because it, it just felt like, I mean, you have to say the lines, you have to, but it, you, you, you portray it and you act it, and before you know it, it's you, you know, or it's just yeah. you doing that. And I'm like, dude, that's got to be cool. I've done a lot of work before that. Just yeah. on the general attitude that I had to have to be the invulnerable um, pinhead, the, yeah. the, the god-like character who has no fear, is completely arrogant, and no one can touch him. Uh, and that's not who I am. Yeah. So to work on that, that was basically my homework. Nice, man. Just to learn the lines first, and then to just be like, yeah. nothing can touch me. But it wasn't until... I had the costume and makeup on for the first time on my first day on set. You were like, I am Pinhead. I, they opened the double doors of the warehouse where we were filming, and I walked through, and there were several crew members standing around, and I heard a couple of people go, and it was like, okay, I am. Pinhead is arrived. It was just all about how yeah. I looked. When yeah. you look like that, you don't have to work very hard. No, no, definitely, man. You see, just don't overact. And of course, uh, the character too, man, because uh, you per you were saying about how he, he portrays himself as being being up there. I always thought of that character of uh, WWE Hunter Hearst, where he used to walk out and he just kind of portrayed himself at, at the top of the the chain, you know. And and I always yeah. saw him like that because it's like when he came out, it was like that was it. He was in charge. Attitude. And, That's yeah. where the movie story yeah. is. I mean, I don't know what the movie star. 
charisma that some of these movie stars have, that they just glow from inside. Yeah. Like, where does that, what is that? Yeah. Like angels? What is that? Yeah. <laughs> it's, I don't know. But, I mean, they, some of them, I haven't met that many movie stars or, or even seen them in person. Uh, but I just, you know, I'm like, apparently, yeah. Nicole Kidman, people like that, it's yeah. like, you just can't even, or, or Margot Robbie, and, yeah. you know, it's like, they're actually perfect. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, I mean, so, they're, they're intimidating. You're like, man, should I say hi? Nicole should Kidman I? Is, is like, painfully shy. And I think that's part of her beauty. Oh, wow. Screen. Yeah. It's like, she doesn't really want to when she looks at you or when when camera actually sees her eyes it's just like wow yeah humphrey bogart said when he was alive many years ago <laughs> he said that you gotta like don't even look for the camera like stay in the shadow yeah let the camera find you because that's more interesting so that when like the camera that. does see your eyes it's like oh hey there it is. yeah you know and i love that and that's Taking me a while to actually not be going. Where's the camera? Where is, it? <laughs> oh, is the camera seeing me? It's like it's not an actor's job to be seen by the camera. Right. Just like on stage, it's not your job to be seen. You're on stage. Yeah. They see you. You don't have to do anything to make them see you. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot of actors are so insecure that they I don't know, or whatever. It is. No. Yeah. You see, and I, I'm a I'm a photographer when it comes to like combat sports, and that's actually how I met this guy, right? Uh, Braxton, but um, when, when I'm taking photos, the same thing. Like, the, I don't tell the fighters, like, hey, look this way or punch this way. I, I have to look for that moment and I have to, and I, I see and I'm, I'm reading the body and I'm I'm shooting as I go because I'm like, oh man, he's gonna throw a kick. Oh, he's gonna do this. And it's just like, yeah. I catch the moment and it's like, when, when I see it on film, I'm like, oh wow, man, like that was, you it's know, life. yeah, it's yeah, life. It, it happened. It's organic. It's just, you know, it's not me. Hey, throw, put your hand over here. No, it's just natural and it's just like, wow. And yeah. when the fighter finally looks at me, they're not even, Based because they're just kind of like it, you know, they're looking this way and it's like, oh, my contact or lens, you know, and then they keep going. But it's Very it's pretty cool. cool though, man. I like that. Yeah. And, and of course, before we wrap this up, my man, uh, as far as projects, can you tell us what, uh, anything you're working on this year? I am cast in a in a crow movie. Um, I, you know, it's uh, I don't know how close it is to be a franchised crow movie. Right. I only know that it's a crow movie. Uh, <laughs> Return to Sodom or something. I should know this. The Crow returned to Sodom. Right. Um, and I'm also, and I'm really excited about that, uh, playing a, a good guy who, you shouldn't be a good guy in this town, because um, you don't last long. Um, <laughs> and then, um, and then another movie I'm really excited about, uh, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Um, it's a serious, I wouldn't call it a horror film. They're they're calling it a psychological yeah. uh, thriller, um, but it's about some really painful subjects, right. specifically incest, rape, and um, incestuous rape. And rapey dad is my role, and um, I'm looking forward to it. Even though I'm gonna be so grossed out the whole time yeah. I'm doing it, um, yeah, because it's disgusting. But he gets what's coming to him, I'd say. Um, but I like the script, and I think it's exciting, yeah. and it's a good story. So that's uh, it's going to be some major acting. So I'm excited about that one too. Nice, man. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm sure there's some other stuff I could talk about, but those are the two that are that, that right in my mind right now. Right, right. No, no, for sure. And of course, I mean, uh, films like this. I mean, they. I don't want to say they fall on your lap because I'm pretty sure people are, are writing stories and they're like, you know who'd be perfect for this? You know what I mean? Is that kind of like they contact you and they tell you about it and hey, well, let's... Speaking of that, this is... Let me talk, tell you. This is a movie that I'm very excited about that's out now. It's called Neon Cactus. Yeah. I'm wearing eye distorting glasses, you can tell here. I, I own a key store, a key shop. And oh, I'm shoot. a Yankee who's living in a Texas town in, in, <laughs> in Oklahoma, Texas. And... Um, the better one. <laughs> That's a close up. Look at that. But uh, Neon Cactus, I think you can see them. 
I'm not sure, but you can find it. It's available. And then the other one that I'm excited about, I have pictures on my table. Uh, where are you? I don't have pictures yet. Oh. <laughs> I don't have pictures. But another one I'm very excited about uh, is called Loving Giving Soul. They may change the title. I, I told the director I think she should call it Happy to Help. But I'm playing a very um, sort of mysterious, creepy... Always creepy. I, um, uh, and by the way, this is kind of a noir, a noir film. It's yeah. kind of Texas modern noir. It's fun. It's nice, fun. man. It's kind of funny. Um, but there's murder in... Any, anyway. Uh, but this other one I'm really excited about. It's, uh, it's why I first grew facial hair. Right. And I'm like, I'm going to have facial hair for now on. Loving Giving Soul, it's, I don't know when it's going to come out, I have no idea, but I'm really excited about the work I did yeah. in it. But like an indistinguishable, you don't know where this guy's from, there's some sort of accent going on, he's a trucker, he may or may, who lives in an apartment complex, he meets yeah. this young lady and he like won't leave her alone, he gaslights her, he, he's just always like, your boyfriend isn't here, we should, I mean, it's, yeah. where is he, I know he's in trouble, I'm psychic, blah, 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 all this stuff. But he may or may not be involved in human trafficking. It's like, it's really weird. And then she's sure that there's someone inside the wall. And the wow. way the script was written is so cool. Like, if they if they accomplish oh. what's on the page in their movie, it's going to be really fascinating. Nice, man. I'm so excited about that one, too. No, Before for sure. Now, I just don't know what's going to no, no, not That's a problem. <laughs> no, man. Well, I do thank you for giving me a few minutes. I mean, of course, we are the Coming Soon Podcast. Myself, Braxton Smith out here. Uh, we thank you, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on film soon, man. Thank you. Appreciate Follow it. me, Instagram, the real Paul T. Taylor. There you go. Thank, thank you, so. my brother. Bye.